Senator Rand Paul already saying this is uh, really not an Obamacare repeal as much as it is Obamacare light. He will be my special guest at 4 p.m. on uh, Your World on Fox News Channel. Ahead of that, Republican Senator Tim Scott, Republican again of South Carolina, what he makes of that early, and I imagine not sole criticism on the part of Republicans. Uh, Senator, he is essentially saying, I think I'm getting him right, and I'll get more later on, um, that it's dead on arrival with him. What do you think? Well, certainly some senators will have the option to say no to this, but the real question is, what are you going to do with the binary choice of keeping Obamacare as it is, moving in the wrong direction based on a false failing formula, or are we going to preserve and return health care decisions to patients and doctors? This plan in a binary world is a much better plan than Obamacare. All right. Now, I noticed that a lot of the uh, Affordable Care Act penalties would stop um, and that this would be a step in the direction to make sure that no one has to get this coverage but it, uh, but there in line what would be the, the means by which you would recruit people to keep the cost of it down so how do republicans answer that well there's two ways to recruit people one is to compel them make it uh, compulsory through the mandates or to allow states to design policies that are consistent with what the uh, folks in their state want. So if you have younger folks who want to participate in the health insurance market, give them the option of having policies that are designed for younger folks. If we give more flexibility in the essential health benefits, states will find themselves creating a path for more insurers to play in that market, which will bring more revenue into the health care market. And we as a nation will be better off when we have those folks participating in the marketplace. You know, Senator, I always get worried when insurance companies are happy. No, no disparagement meant on insurance yeah, companies, but having absolutely. dealt with some medical condition, I guess that they, they they can be rough customers. So when I see their stock soaring and they're relieved and they're happy, uh, I'm kind of not. Uh, disavow me of that concern. Yeah. So as a patient or someone who's a pro, who's, who's going to have the, the uh, access to health insurance, one of the things I would say is certainty and predictability in the real world of business is more important than good policy. My opinion is this policy moves us in the right direction, but no one should celebrate, particularly insurance companies. But what they will celebrate is the fact that there will be access for more Americans to have policies that they actually want to buy. And today, health insurance companies are leaving the exchanges. One out of three counties throughout this country have only one insurance company oh, no, left no, you're, you're quite right, Sam. The only reason why I raised it is that, and you didn't have to be a, a math whiz to figure out back in 2010, as we did when we covered the creation you're of You're a the, math whiz, uh, though. Uh, and I, I wish. But one of the things I did notice, Senator, is that when you make all these guarantees and coverage for pre-existing conditions and keeping your kids on the policy longer, and you don't think your premiums are going to go up, of course, you're smoking something. Uh, but, of course, it's that, that with law reality. helped those who did smoke something. I, but I digress. But now, <laughs> Senator, uh, uh, you, you wonder, with the same guarantees largely kept in place, pre-existing conditions, keeping your kids on policy longer, this Republican plan, won't insurance companies have room to do what they did under Obamacare and, and continue to hike premiums? Well, there's no doubt that when you look at the last four years in South Carolina, the rate increase was 120 percent. Wow. Under our plan, we can expect rate increases to be significantly lower. One of the things that Obamacare said is that your premium will go down about $2,500. What did we see? A multiple thousand dollar increase in the premiums. They okay, said you, you can keep your doctor. Senator, now we're going you, to say you, you can have but, a doctor. But you, I know you weren't part of the, the, the group that crafted this. No, but I was not. Can you... Guarantee that there won't be eye popping increases, nevertheless. Well, n never make a commitment that you know you can't keep. I have yeah. no clue on how to make a guarantee of anything in the future. What I can say, however, is that relaxing the essential health benefits is one of the ways that you create policies that are designed for specific needs. By doing so, you bring more revenue into the healthcare world. That in and of itself is what Obamacare failed to do. Obamacare failed to attract 7 million young people as they designed the plan around that would help subsidize the premiums for older people. Because that never happened, premiums spiked. And then they continue to spike. And so what we're having to do this time around is to, two things that we have to do. Number one is to stabilize health insurance markets 
especially for the individual market. And number two, give states and insurers more flexibility on what their citizens or their insureds want in a policy. When those two things happen, people return to the market. When people return to the market, you get more revenue. When you get more revenue, you can actually lower premiums. Well, you hope, right? I, you know, uh, I'm you, just you, wondering. You can only so, hope. Uh, right. Uh, you know, uh, the critics of the Senate plan say it's actually not a, a repeal uh, of Obamacare as much as it is sort of an adjustment, maybe shaving at the, the edges. And if that is indeed the case, and I'm sure you don't agree with that assessment, but uh, w would it have been wise for Republicans at the get-go to say, all right, we want Democratic support for this. We're not going to repeal the thing. We're, we're mightily going to change it. Had you done that, since a lot of people say in the end you came up with a, a lighter version of Obamacare, uh, that you could have had a lot more Democratic support on this, and this quest to keep Republicans in line might not be necessary. What do you think? Words matter, but here are the words that matter the most. The individual and the employer mandate is gone. When you no longer are compelled to buy something, Democrats in draw large numbers flock in the opposite direction. We are restoring the decision-making to the household, to the individual. This is something that is a clear line of delineation between the current health care model that requires anyone breathing to buy it in this country and our model that gives you the option to make a decision. So with that said, Obamacare is largely about taxes and individual and employer mandate that requires people to buy insurance. We have done something significant gotcha. to restore choice in All the right. marketplace. Well, you've heard from the Democratic critics, uh, Chuck Schumer, Nancy Pelosi, saying essentially this is even worse than the version the House came the up House, with. That's no. to be expected, I guess. But what was striking All marketing to me, on their part, the, unfortunately. The Congressional Black Caucus, as you know, sir, has skewed a meeting with uh, Trump officials on, on yes. pretty much any subject. Uh, one aide is there saying that no one wants to be a co-star on this reality show. What did you make of that? Well, it's just really unfortunate. Here's what we have. We have the President of the United States willing to meet with a powerful group of the Congress members to find ways to improve the quality of life of their citizens. The answer can't be no. Uh, if you do, don't like the direction of the policies of the President or you don't like the President, it's not about him. It's about the policy positions that are represented in the administration that could bring relief two citizens. I brought in over 80 presidents and chancellors of historically black colleges and universities and their ask was for a year-round Pell Grant. Guess what they received before they uh, left? Basically they received affirmation that the president was willing to restore year-round year Pell Grants. It was because that we're having conversations with groups that don't normally sit in the same room that we can help more Americans. I, I have tremendous respect for the Congressional Black Caucus. I also think that we have to do what's not in our best interest always, but what's in the best interest of our citizens. And from my perspective, it is in our best interest to sit down with anyone, anywhere, at any time, who is willing to take a serious look and provide solutions for the citizens that we represent. Finally, sir, of course, there was a big uh, district race in your uh, fine state. Oh, yes. Ralph Norman Close. won. But but barely, I mean, by fewer than four points versus Mick Mulvaney, the, Senate, the uh, congressional seat he was aspiring to, uh, who won it by more than 20 points. Yes. Some have uh, overlooked that and, and, and not the fact that, that maybe Republicans could be in more trouble than earlier thought. How do you feel? Well, there, there is a big part of the election that we have to remember. Sometimes you win because the other team loses. And sometimes you get comfortable when you have all three, the trifecta here in Washington. What I would suggest for 2018 is that we pay close attention to every single race because every single race will not be a, a, a litmus test on the Trump administration. It will be district by district in, in the House and state by state in the Senate. And if we do not have plans specifically designed to remind our voters why they elected us, we will be in jeopardy. And if we do have specific plans reminding the voters that we're not talking about left versus right, we're talking about America's future, and they are the central part of our conversation, we'll win races. All right, Senator, good catching up with you. Good to see you again. Good to see you, Neil. Take care.